Okay, so the way I want you to do this, okay, I want you to work through this question, how you would work through this question, and then I'm going to teach you how I want you to work through these questions. Does it make sense? And how you're thinking in your mind is how I want you to read out loud. Okay. Okay, so work me through this question. Okay, so a three-day-old male infant presents with poor urine output, a distended bladder on physical examination, and bilateral hydronephrosis on ultrasound. A voiding cystourethrogram is performed and shows a dilated posterior urethra with a tapering proximal to the membranous urethra. Which of the following is the most likely um, diagnosis? So I guess like the main uh, terms or words that I would highlight would be poor urine output, distended bladder, uh, bilateral hydronephrosis, uh, the dilated posterior urethra as well. And I'm thinking obviously it's congenital disorder um, that would be causing hydronephrosis. So looking at the answer choices, I think epispadia is where you have like the opening, I think, I'm guessing, I don't remember necessarily, from like the under portion of the penis. And then hypospadia is also another opening. So those might not necessarily be um, the best choices. Um, posterior urethral valves was what I was immediately thinking when I, as I was reading the question. Um, uter, uh, uterocel, I'm not really sure exactly what that is but I'm guessing that it's some sort of mass around the ureters. So that could be a consideration okay. and bladder extrophy. Um, not sure if that applies to this either. Okay, good. So what answer would you choose in this particular question? Uh, posterior urethral valves. Okay, good. All right. So I'm going to teach you how I want you to kind of work through this. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to unhighlight everything. Okay. So number one, Okay, I always want you to read the question first. Okay? okay, the reason why I want you to read the question first is going to give you a good idea of what you're looking for while you're reading the case. Okay, so in this particular question, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So I know that it's a diagnostic question, right? So my mind is already kind of thinking that. Okay, number two, okay, I want you to be thinking about um, or skimming the answer choices, okay? When you skim the answer choices, I want you to start thinking, okay, what are we dealing with? So when I read this, right, I'm thinking, oh, this is some kind of renal question, correct? Renal or repro, right? Mm -hmm. Repro, okay? Okay, number three is I want you to read the case, okay, and highlight, okay? Okay. And when you read the case and highlight, it's going to take some time, but I want you to be looking for things that are clinical, okay? So three-day-old male infant, that's going to be important because it tells you the age and the sex of the patient, which you can start narrowing down uh, what is the diagnosis, right? And then presents with poor urine output, a distended bladder, right? And then bilateral hydronephrosis on ultrasound, super important, right? So not peeing, bladders descended, right? And then bilateral hydronephrosis, so meaning that um, kidneys are filling up with urine and blowing up. A voiding cyst uh, urogram is performed, and it also shows dilated posterior urethra with tape proximal to the membranous uh, urethra. So these are all clinical things. So mm -hmm. now after you do that, number four, okay, obviously this question doesn't have it, but labs are imaging. Okay. Okay. And um, if there are labs, I want you to highlight every abnormal lab. It shouldn't take you that long, 15 to 30 seconds, right? Of course, you know, you're going to get faster and faster as you do it, but you need to highlight all the abnormal labs so that you can have more pieces of evidence to work with, okay? And then if there's an image, whether that's a histology slide, whether that is um, a image like a, a CT scan or an MRI or anything like that, I want you to focus on what's the most blaring thing that's wrong with the image. Does it make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So usually it's in the center or near the center of the scan or histology slide, I would say. So that's something you can use as a test taking strategy, but just mm -hmm. focus on the most blaring thing that looks wrong. Um, don't look at the specs that are on the corner of the you know, screen or things like that. I want you to look at what's most blaring. Okay. Okay. And then last but not least, number five. Okay. Um, 
pick your gut answer choice. Okay. What that means is what does your mind have a predilection to, right? When you first read it and go through it. So in this instance, right, your gut says, oh, it's probably posterior urethral. That's what I initially thought. And then you start working through, do you keep it, keep or change? Okay. That's kind of what I want you to be thinking about. Do you keep it or change it? And I want you to only change it if you're a hundred percent sure that you have a piece of evidence that supports something else. Okay. And you have to be a hundred percent sure. Okay. If you're like, oh, maybe I read something that might support B, that's not that's not strong enough, right? Because most of the time your gut, I always explain your gut answer choice is like um your mind can't pull to the conscious side, right? So, but your subconscious, because of all the studying, is somewhat leaning towards something. That's your gut answer. So you need to trust your gut unless you are a hundred percent sure that there's a piece of evidence to change it. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, perfect. Questions about the five steps? Um, no, not so far. Okay, perfect. So you pick D and that's a beautiful answer. Okay. That's an amazing answer. It's a hundred percent correct. Right. So if you think about anatomically speaking, right, I always kind of, you know, I'm going to draw bad things. Like, you know, what I'm saying is like my drawings are pretty bad, but it'll help you remember. Okay. So if you can imagine here, your kidneys, right. Your ureters, right. Your ureters go down right to your bladder. Okay. And then your bladder comes out to your urethra, right? Of course, right? If you're male, you have a penis. If not, then it's just your urethra, right? And so if you draw and know the anatomy, right? If you can work backwards, then you can understand where the back uh, clog is, right? So for instance, bilateral hydronephrosis. So both kidneys are dilated, right? So you have to know that it cannot be in a ureter because it wouldn't dilate the other one, right? On a, if you're talking anatomically, right? And then also on top of that, right? A distended bladder. So the bladder is distended. So that means that has to be distal to the bladder somewhere here, right? Or here, right? So of course your posterior urethral valves, which is right here, if that is a little bit blocked, then all the urine they didn't say it, but you would also have hydro ureters, right? Meaning that your ureters are also dilated. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. Perfect. Questions, concerns about that? For bladder extrophy, um, what is that? Yeah. So mm -hmm. me, I don't remember what bladder extrophy means. It means, I, let's look it up. It might mean, I think, um, maybe the, let's see, bladder extrophy. Maybe the bladder is outside the body or something. Okay. Rare condition with those. Yeah. Okay. So outside the body. Right. So um, one of the key things I like that you mentioned this, right, um, is that on a test taking standpoint, if you don't know what it is, do not pick it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's my rule of thumb. The reason why is because just imagine if you're, you know, you're working with me through questions and I ask you, why did you pick bladder extra fee? You wouldn't be able to explain your answer. Right. So that's a bad answer choice. So never pick something you don't know. So that's a good test taking strategy. Right. Okay.